Hey everyone, MBLKN has uploaded his strokes to YouTube and posted them in the forum, so I'm going to take a look at his shots. And MB, I think uh, with a couple tweaks, you've got some very nice strokes. With a couple tweaks, I think you're really going to see some improvement in your game. So we're going to start with your forehand and then go from there. All right, let's start by taking a look at your forehand. And first we're going to look at your shoulder rotation when you swing forward to your contact point. And take a look at your other arm, your non-hitting arm here, when you swing. You're actually swinging that arm out of the way. And what that's doing is it's opening your shoulders up too soon. So this is almost at contact. You're a little bit before contact here, and your shoulders are already past facing the net. And you want your shoulders to be facing the net at contact. And what's probably happen happening is you're swinging this arm out of the way, and that's opening it up too soon. Now let's take a look at Oliver hitting his forehand, and we'll watch how he uses his other arm right here, or how he doesn't use it, rather, when he swings forward to hit his forehand. What he's going to do, and what you want to do, is he'll focus on his shoulder rotation, and this arm is going to take care of itself. It's physically impossible to leave this arm here and rotate your shoulders back towards the net. The arm has to come out of the way, so if you focus on your shoulder rotation, then this arm will will take care of itself. I'm going to fast forward a little bit to contact. And you'll see he's rotating the shoulders. This arm stays much more next uh, it's much closer to his body and then at contact, he's got it right here as opposed to you which had it you had it much further out. So again, just focus on the shoulder rotation, the arm will take care of itself. Second, let's take a look at your hitting arm position before and right after contact. And here you are, you're about to hit the tennis ball. The tennis ball's right here, and your racket's about here. It's a little bit hard to see. But what you want to do is maintain this hitting arm position through contact. So you're going to hit the ball, and then you want your arm position, the relationship between your racket and your arm, to stay the same. But what you do, if we play this forward a little bit, is that structure starts to break down. You've turned your wrist over, so the strings, again, it's a little bit difficult to see, but the strings are facing the court, and you want your arm position to stay the same into your follow-through. So let's take a look at Frank and see how he does it. Here's Frank at contact, or more or less at contact, and he's going to keep this arm position, the bend of the elbow, the laid-back wrist. He's going to keep that through contact. So let's play it forward. He's made contact, and then the ball is well off his strings, but he still has that same relationship. So his strings are still parallel to the court. Yours were facing the court at this point. So you want to work on keeping this hitting arm position well in your follow through. And this actually goes for the bat. We'll, we'll talk about this with the backhand, but it's the same thing on your backhand side. Finally, let's look at your weight transfer on the forehand. And your weight stays back a little bit, a little bit too much as you hit and into your follow through. You can see you're kind of leaning back a little bit. The weight's on your front foot, but your upper body is angled back when you want it kind of here. Okay, let's use that same clip we just had of Frank, and here he is swinging to his contact point. And let's look at his body position right now. He's much more upright. His weight's coming forward when he's, when he's swinging to the tennis ball. And then through contact, he still stays upright, and his body continues to kind of move forward into the court a little bit. Not too much, but he's got his weight forward as opposed to you where you were leaning back, your, your upper body would have been back here during your follow through. And he's pretty much standing up right here. So you wanna work on getting your weight into the court as you hit. Okay, let's move on to the backhand now. The first thing you wanna work on is extending further out into the court after you hit. You pull off the ball a little bit too early. So here you are more or less at contact what you want to do is extend into the court and keep your hitting, or I should say, your right arm straight. You want to extend into the court and have that arm straight even when, you're, when your hands are about head level. And what you do is you pull off too soon. Your, your elbows are already bent. You want, to have, you want them to be straight here. And you're pulling the racket around to the other side of your body so you're finishing around your shoulder. So let's take a look at me hitting my backhand from the side, and you'll see I'm going to extend my arms really far into the court 
after I hit. This is my two-hander from the side, and I'm going to speed it up to my contact point, almost there. And after I make contact, I am going to keep, so you can see my right arm is straight here. I'm going to keep that arm straight, well into contact. My hands are going to be about head level before I start to bend my elbows. I really extend out in the direction that I'm hitting. And just about here, my hands are about shoulder height. Now they start to bend a little bit. And I'm bringing my racket up around my shoulder. Your follow-through is a little bit lower. It's around your, uh, around your shoulders. Mine's up by my head, rather. So if you keep that hitting arm straight well through contact, that should help you follow through around up by your head and over your shoulder as opposed to around your shoulder.